Welcome back to day two of pointers and pitfalls for oncology startups. Yesterday was fun, and I understand there's a director of fund position opening up at the FDA. Let's look at that map, that roadmap again. And I realize that many of you may take a real spring break this year, but if I wasn't unequivocally regulatorily clear yesterday, FDA oncology strongly suggests you make that a safe, socially distanced vacation with no beach parties. Day two, where are we going? Prisma Patel and Olin Stevens will discuss small molecule drug CMC considerations for eye and de-enabling studies. I'm still quite fond of the initial working title for this session, which was, what's in that dude? Like nanoparticles, polymers, liposomes, the inactive ingredient database, protax, there's some fascinating chemicals targeting interesting biology. Wendy Weinberg and Kristen Nickens will then discuss similar regulatory considerations, but for well-characterized biologic products, which include a host of emerging fruitful products like immune cell engagers and antibody drug conjugates. Whitney Helms will help you understand toxicology studies and why you don't want to do these studies yourself. Two species versus one species, a rodent and your choice of mammal or any animal. What's a relevant species? What's the Mabel approach? Martha Donahue will discuss first in human trials for small molecule drugs and biologics. There was a time when these studies in truth were designed simply to identify a maximally tolerated dose. They were hopeful human toxicology studies. Now there are a multitude of important considerations for first in human trials that are targeting pathways identified by science with biomarkers that can be measured and patient populations that can be enriched for response. Listen carefully to Dr. Donahue. After lunch, Donna Roscoe, a CDRH, will discuss companion diagnostics. In today's world of drug development, the diagnostic, what identifies the patient population that will respond to the drug you have developed to target specific biology is almost on par of importance as the drug itself. This is not something you can leave to a PMR. Then Anthony Fotinos and Donna Pliku will discuss emerging market pathways for theranostics. If you have an antibody that selectively targets a tumor, why not attach multiple toxic payloads to that transport? Not at the same time, of course, but maybe. Anyways, I kid, I kid sometimes about the stuff we do is not rocket science, but you should see some of the half page mathematical formulas describing these products. It's pretty complicated stuff. I think Donna and Anthony are going to simplify this for you. Finally, Brian Booth will help you understand the importance of finding the optimal dose. We know going fast is important to you. There's a capital burn rate and limited funding showing early that your therapy has the potential for substantive activity may be a live or die issue for your company. It's also a potential live or die issue for patients because of excess of toxicity. Patients will always come first over your company. So listen, think, and plan for dose optimization as early as possible. At the end of the day, Mark Thierry, the deputy director for the Office of Oncology Center of Excellence and myself, We'll take live questions on topics from the past two days. We will do our best. Financial questions will be tough for us, although we may have some ideas. And radionuclide alpha particles over beta particles and lead isotopes over copper isotopes, those are off limits. But we can try and get you the answer and follow up with you. So let's get started, and I'll turn this back over to Lisa and SBIA.